we're asking a question about um god, god. yes is he that mad i mean is he, is he that bad that he can destroy every other person uh apart from those christians who believed in jesus christ because muslims don't believe in jesus christ mm. uh hindus don't believe in jesus christ yeah well yeah. let's let's talk about muslims just for a second mm-hmm. yeah um, because I love Muslims, I'm, I'm a, um, I work with the um, Oxford Center for Muslim and Christian Studies, and I dialogue with Muslims all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, to say they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they actually do believe in Isa the Messiah, yeah. and they do believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. They believe that Jesus um, lived a sinless and perfect life, performed many miracles, ascended to heaven, and. Um, will one day come back and judge the living and the dead and if you take um you know um verse i believe it is oh, i'm having a bad memory day but i believe it is um surah 3 but 23 if i my memory serves me correctly and forgive me if i'm wrong that it says that um allah is speaking to isa and isa is a jesus figure and allah says basically that i will i will lay you down i will strike you down i will and then i will bring you up to me mm-hmm. and then he talks about mm-hmm. he's going to pu- punish his yeah. persecutors and some people have taken that to think that the, in that that strike you down there that's in english but in the strict arabic i, I forget the word but it is uh, it mm-hmm. means that he will lay you down to die when it mm-hmm. refers to any human mm-hmm. yeah so it's almost like you can extract the entire gospel out of the quran mm-hmm. and and so like there's two sides to po- to apologetics. You know, you have what's called positive apologetics mm-hmm. and negative apologetics. Yeah. Negative apologetics talks about how we're against certain things. Mm-hmm. And certainly, as as Danson was saying earlier, certainly Christianity is an exclusive religion. There's mm-hmm. no other way. Yeah. But Paul's ver- use of apologetics, if you can give me just a minute, is, mm-hmm. is very... Um, different if you look at what he does in Athens he uses a more positive approach so if you know anything about Greek culture the Apostle Paul walks into a place that is filled with all kinds of pagan idols and it says right here in Scripture that his spirit was provoked within him so he's looking around saying like man these people are lost (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. but the way he approached them he said um, men of Athens I see you're very religious in all respects Mm -hmm. For I went around and observed closely your objects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Mm -hmm. So what's Paul doing there? He's saying, first of all, I respect you for your religious sentiments. Mm -hmm. Like, but you don't know the whole story. You don't. And and then this would be strange if you saw any Christian preacher do this. Mm -hmm. He points to a pagan idol and said, I'm here to tell you about that one right there. Mm -hmm. Now that, now what he's doing is he's trying to find things within a religion that he agrees with and mm-hmm. oftentimes christians take the approach that like we're against this we're against this we're against this but if you look at islam what i just said a minute ago we agree with a whole lot of what they say yeah. about isa mm-hmm. about jesus and so this is what paul is doing he is basically showing them the fullness of the truth within world religions how does an idea flourish it's but no idea flourishes that is filled full of lies Mm-hmm. Ideas have to have to have truth in order for them to flourish. There's truth somewhere. Mm-hmm. And Christians would believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That means all truth is God's truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus is in all things, through yeah. all things, before mm-hmm. all things. Um, as it says in Colossians chapter 1. Now, it says here in Acts 17, the Apostle Paul, and I'll just point you to this. He says this powerful statement. In Acts 17, 28, he says, For in him we live and move and have our being. Now, that's a powerful verse. But it doesn't end there. So he's talking about Jesus. And then he says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at Scripture and you see a little statement in there, you have to ask, why would God want that in there? Like, why is that significant? Mm -hmm. And Acts was a book of history, so it quotes things that are historical yeah. artifacts. So, you know, I went looking. Like, what poet said this? Mm-hmm. And what I found was <clears throat> Epimenides. And Epimenides wrote a poem about 600 years before Jesus about Zeus, actually. And what he wrote in that poem mm-hmm. was was this right here. I will, I will read it to you. He um, he said. They fashioned a tomb for you, holy and high one, 
but you're not dead. You live and abide forever. For in you we live and move and have our being. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Hold on just a minute. Is he talking Uh about Zeus? Mm. Or is he maybe, maybe God is planting a cultural seed somewhere in somebody Mm. that they highly respected, anticipating the missionary to come and share the gospel Mm -hmm. with Apostle Paul Mm. 600 years later? Every Athenian, especially the ones that were listening to Paul, would have that in their cultural memory. They all knew poems were huge Mm. then. Poetry was huge to them. So it's like sometimes we need to look and say, you know, look at these world religions just for a minute. What do we agree with? And then we say, okay, now you've got this mostly true, but here's the fullness of the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ has come. He is God in the flesh. And he, in a sense, completes a lot of these narratives. Now, I live in Houston, Texas. It's one of the most, it is the most culturally diverse city in the United States. Not too far from my house is one of the largest Vietnamese Buddhist temples in the country. Mm -hmm. And there they have a huge figure called um, Quanam Tarthagata. That's one of their two deities, the the Vietnamese Pure Land Buddhist Mm -hmm. worship. They Mm -hmm. worship Krishna and Quanam Tarthagata. Quanam Tarthagata is a 50-foot tall jade statue, beautiful statue, and around the bottom of the statue it tells her story. And in her story it says things like, Quanam Tarthagata will come and rescue her followers and bring her and bring them into the pure the pure land. Mm-hmm. Quanam Tarthagata has purified the hearts and minds of her believers. Quanam Tarthagata has descended into hell and has destroyed the demons and things mm-hmm. like that. And you're sitting there thinking, like, oh my goodness, this sounds so much like almost the the Apostles' Creed, mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. we're reading here. Yeah. yeah. And so if you study world religions enough, you start digging into these things, yeah. and it actually becomes a very powerful way to approach your neighbor mm-hmm. with this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the things, that's what I wrote my master's thesis was about, was how to go about that mm-hmm. with Islam, respectfully. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know? Because what did Paul do? He respected them, yeah. and then he found out the things that he could yeah. agree with, and then built that bridge back to the gospel Mm -hmm. and then it says that even one of those Athenians one of those Athenians that were saved there was uh, Damaris Mm -hmm. and and, uh, or Dionysius sorry Dionysius Mm -hmm. I knew that was wrong Dionysius ended up being the bishop of Athens he repented from being a pagan philosopher and Mm -hmm. decided he was going to be the bishop of Athens so there's no specific answer that these ones who are not in the Christian uh, flock will perish or go to hell. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, <clears throat> what do you say to the person that, like, after America just got out of a war with Afghanistan that spanned 20 years, and they said that less than 5% of the entire nation of Afghanistan has heard the gospel? Mm-hmm. How does God deal with those kind of people? Mm-hmm. How does He deal with all the Christians mm-hmm. that were on that on that continent, mm-hmm. on that country yeah. for yeah. 20 years? Yeah. And didn't share the gospel, mm-hmm. or how do you deal with the Papua New, the tribes in Papua New Guinea, or at least you know we're in the African continent. You know, African continent was was still very tribal not 300 years ago or mm-hmm. something, you know, mm-hmm. or longer. I don't know the history as well as I do Papua New Guinea, mm-hmm. but I mean, are we saying that every one of the African ancestors mm-hmm. all perished because they had no chance yeah. of hearing the gospel? Mm-hmm. So perhaps God judges us on the lot that we have. Yeah. That I'm not saying that all roads lead to heaven. I am saying, though, there's a such thing as someone who looks to the sky and says, there's a God out there. He wants me to live holy, mm-hmm. and I can't do it without his help. Mm-hmm. And, may, and the Holy Spirit, I think, and God is big mm-hmm. enough to witness to those people. But that does not say that we still need to go share the gospel with them. Mm-hmm. And the very best chance they have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. I'm just saying there is a little bit of nuance in there, I think, yeah. as we think through that. Amazing. And Danson may totally yeah. disagree with me and we can argue about <laughs> it right now, and that's okay. <laughs> but that that's yeah. my perspective mm-hmm. anyway, as mm-hmm. a missionary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't disagree with you. I think <laughs> I see where you're coming from. The idea is that when when while we were we are reading the Bible, we should appreciate that the Bible is very exclusive as to how we actually go to heaven or how we actually get access to God. Yeah. And because God has made that provision, mm-hmm. 
we, we must strive as much as possible to follow that way. Mm -hmm. uh, to the question of what God is going to do with those who don't believe and have not had the gospel, that yeah. is his prerogative because he's mm -hmm. a very just God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for you who has had the gospel yep. and rejected it because you believe that your way is the right way, there is news for you. Jesus Christ has proclaimed that he is the only way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, <clears throat> and that's why Christianity is very offensive in a sense mm -hmm. it's offensive in the sense that it claims exclusivity mm -hmm. apart from this way yeah. there is no other way mm -hmm. and yeah. it's not just that it's saying that because um we want to rule the world or anything it's because it's re reasonable uh if you read through the bible there's a reasonableness to the gospel and there yeah. is also a relevance to it when you look at your life you realize i can't sort the same problem in me i go all to these other religion parts there is no solution mm -hmm. and you find your way back to the gospel as the only solution to the problem of sin and death right. jesus christ himself yeah. awesome yeah. 96.9 fm pearl radio